Craig, and uh, let me also welcome you here to the university. Um, as Craig said, this is a, an exciting day for us as, as part of our, our transition and the continuing transformation of Robert Marsh University. Uh, interestingly enough, as, as we continue to grow as a, as a comprehensive residential university, which really began 20, 25 years ago, uh, making that, that, that transition that really has raised the profile of this university tremendously and the success of the university, Division I sports have played a, a critical role in that, in that evolution of the university. Um, from the standpoint of creating really exciting athletics on the campus across all of our 23 sports, obviously including football, uh, but also really creating a, a sense of student life and a student experience at this university that's part of that transformative experience that we, we work very hard to create for, for students, whether you be traditional age students or even adult students or non-traditional students. Uh, for alumni relations, seeing alumni get more and more excited about the university, both in terms of the value of the degrees as, as the academic profile of the university increases, but also to come back to campus and really engage in the athletic events as well as the other events that take place uh, here. The name recognition of the university, uh, you, you cannot deny in our society today that sports play a critical role in helping a school like Robert Marsh University raise its profile, uh, and, and, and obviously football has played a critical role in that. So combined with all those things and the continued growth and progress of our academic programs and our institutional reputation, we're very, very excited about the success we've had of a relatively short history of football at Robert Marsh University. You know, we've only had football at this university for 18 years, uh, and we only had one coach in that time period, uh, Joe Warren. And uh, Joe has been extremely successful, uh, taking a program truly from scratch. I mean, less than scratch <laughs> when we started the program. Uh, and he really was, was very creative, uh, moving from the, the professional ranks that he had had a, an illustrious career both as a player and as a coach, and then coming to a college, uh, an FCS college, uh, and, and really building a program uh, from scratch, as I said, with, with no players, and, and it really has taken on a tremendous level of success for, for himself, for his, for his student athletes over the years, as well as for the university. So with all the success that Joe's had on the field, and, and I know we'll talk about that later, uh, he really has been uh, beyond just being a, a great football coach. He is a great uh, builder of character and leadership of, of young men who are truly student athletes at the FCS level here at Robert Marsh University. Uh, and so his, his athletes have gone on to do great things uh, beyond football, and some have even gone on to, into the NFL, as we know, and, and Tim Halls and, and Hank Bailey's and so forth have, have had uh, very, very good careers in the NFL. But more importantly, a lot of the players have gone on to be great citizens and great uh, uh, providers for their families and their communities. Part of that athletic importance to the university uh, is not only the success in the field, but what it does for these young student athletes. Uh, it really ties very closely into our whole idea of student engagement, wanting our students to have a learning experience that goes beyond just the classroom. And you cannot deny uh, at our level the importance that that has at the Division I sports level. Our student athletes truly are engaged in all the right activities that you'd want from student athletes in college sports today. So with the success of Joe, uh, we, we cannot um, uh, really deny the fact that he has been instrumental in, in the rise of this university, all the way to the point of having his name on our stadium, uh, which is a, it was a great honor to have uh, bestowed on Joe when he, uh, after he filled that stadium in 2005 and opened it. As you know, in our history of our program, uh, we started the program in 94, and in the first number of years, we played at Moon Township High School. Uh, which is a great facility, but it was still a high school. It wasn't on campus. So I was very fortunate my first year in 05 uh, to come, and, and we just opened the stadium. And that really did help to, to elevate the program uh, to be able to create that kind of excitement I talked about earlier with our students and our student athletes. And it clearly also helped with recruiting and that overall experience for our, for our football players and the coaches that have, that have coached them over the years. Um, this past year, we were able to, uh, for the first time, put lights in the stadium. Uh, which really adds a whole new dimension to the, uh, the experience, and there will be more evening games. In fact, this past homecoming that we had this fall um, was probably one of the most exciting games on this college campus, a and football played a critical role in that excitement. We had alumni came back who had not been on this campus for 40 years after graduation, and they came back, and the numbers were off the charts, and the, the attendance at the football game that evening uh, was, was you know, beyond what we ever expected. It was standing room only. We actually had to turn people away. Uh, we never thought we'd see that at our stadium, and it was really an exciting time. Plus, to win the game, play under the lights, fireworks at the game, it really sort of culminated what we've been working on for the last 18 years, and again, a lot of that was tribute to, to Joe Warren. And I also mentioned when I talked about Joe, uh, 
My first actual official slash unofficial duty as president in 2005, uh, actually a week before I, I think I was actually on the job, uh, they invited me back because they just gave me the inauguration, the opening of a new football stadium, the George Walton Stadium. And so as new president, along with Ed Nicholson, who was still actual president at the time, um, I was given the opportunity to say a few words at that, at that opening. And uh, what I said that time, and I still reflect on this today, because uh, there's a real personal aspect to, to Jerry that uh, many people might not know. As uh, someone who grew up in New Jersey, uh, I must tell you that I am a, I'm a lifelong New York Giants season ticket holder. Um, but that's okay with Mrs. Rooney, who's on our board of trustees, because Rooney Mara, get it? Mara's the Giants. Uh, we're, we're, we're in the family, as Mrs. Rooney told me. Um, I did say, as, as a child growing up and, and watching the New York Giants as a kid back in the early 60s uh, with those great New York Giant teams, Joe Walton being one of those players was, was sort of a hero of mine as a kid uh, growing up. And then you know, 40 years later, here I am, of course, as the president of the university and having the opportunity to work with Joe. And that was exciting in 2005, but it's even more exciting today after having the opportunity to work with Joe directly and, and Dr. Coleman uh, in our athletics program over the last seven years and seeing Joe not only as a coach but as a person and, and, and his passion for collegiate athletics in the truest sense in which collegiate athletics should be played and, and run. And so Joe really is, as, as I said earlier, not only a great coach but a great builder of character of young men, and we're very proud of that. Last I'll say, and I'll turn it back to Dr. Coleman, when I think about Joe and the success of the program, obviously we talk about all the championships and the bowl games he's won and so forth at the university. But the one thing I always look back at, he's graduated his athletes. He's had a great APR of the year. Uh, as you know, it's one of the key measures we're looking at today is the new interest in AAA, uh, and that's been a success for us. But more importantly, I hope you realize that in 18 years of football at this university, Joe has had 14 players who are academic All-Americans. That is unbelievable. In this past year, we had three. And the only school in the country, I believe, that has three academic All-Americans on its football team. So not only is he winning on the field, he's winning in the classroom. And that says a lot about what our college athletics should be today, and we're very proud of that. So the success and the, and the support that we've had with Joe, uh, we're looking for the next two years having as much success as we've had in the past, both on the field and in the classroom. But in our time now as we're, as we're beginning to transition uh, to, to the new head coach, John Banaszak, in two years, uh, we're very excited that John will continue that level of success we've had in the program, uh, again, on the field and in the classroom. And we're really excited about this idea of transitioning smoothly at this university uh, from one coach to the next, and we're very, very excited for that. So with that, I want to thank Joe. And I just still have two years to produce for us, Joe. And then I want to really you know, offer my, my endorsement and my uh, wishes of success to John and his family because I know he's going to be a great head coach for Rock Mark University in the next wave of our growth at the university and the growth of our football program. So with that, I'd like to turn over to Dr. Coleman. Thank you, President Delamo. Today we're here to uh, really do a dual celebration, a celebration of the past, present, and immediate future, and then most of all, uh, today, a celebration of the future to come um, beyond 2013 with our new coach-in-waiting, John Banaszak. Let me just talk a little bit about the program and where it's come under Coach Walton, and then we're going to talk about Coach Banaszak and his career up, up until this point. Coach Walton, as most of you know, graduated from Pitt, where he was a two-time All-American at, at tight end, had a seven-year playing career with the Washington Redskins and the New York Giants. His NFL coaching career prior to coming to Robert Morris was as head coach of the New York Jets for seven years, an offensive coordinator for two years with the Pittsburgh Steelers, you've all heard of them, uh, under the legendary coach Chuck Knoll, and 14 years as an assistant for the Redskins, Giants, and Jets, including five of those years as an offensive coordinator. Um, he was named head coach of our football team on July 27, 1993, with our first football season in 1994, as Dr. DeLomo said, taking place in Noon High School Stadium. Since that time, our football program has won three outright Northeast Conference titles and has shared three other titles. Um, for a total of six conference championships. In 1999 and 2000, in the 2000 year of particular note because we were undefeated, we were named the Division I AA Mid-Major National Champions by Don Hansen's National Weekly Football Gazette. The last decade, the Northeast Conference moved from non-scholarship football to scholarship football. And we've made that transition well, culminating in a 
uh, Conference Championship in 2010 and the first ever Northeast Conference berth to the NCAA FCS playoffs. Uh, in 2005, as Dr. Galamo mentioned, we moved into uh, the, the newly built Joe Walton Stadium, named after our uh, founding coach uh, at, the, at the request of a, an anonymous donor uh, to the construction project. Uh, I think that Coach Walton was a bit embarrassed by it, but agreed to it. Um, and in this past fall, he announced his intent to retire after the 2013 season, um, which would mark 20 years as our head coach, and thus sets the stage for why we're here today. The naming of a head coach in waiting. We are blessed. Oh, Karen's back. We are blessed to have right here on our current coaching staff. Can't hear you, Kayla. We are blessed to have right here on our current coaching staff the exact individual with the background, the stature, the intangibles to become the second head coach in Robert Morris University football history. John Banizak, let's talk about his resume and what he brings to the table to our football program. John graduated from Eastern Michigan University in 1975 with a Bachelor of Science degree. He won the E.J. Reinerson Scholar-Athlete Award at Eastern Michigan. And in 1985, was named in the uh, Eastern Michigan University Hall of Fame. He signed as a free agent with the Pittsburgh Steelers in 1975, and that year was one of only three rookies to make the team, as they were a Super Bowl-caliber team, as you recall. Coach Banizak, back then known as John, played a prominent role in Super Bowls 10, 13, and 14, initially as a special teams player and ultimately as a dominating defensive lineman. Probably the single greatest highlight from John's Super Bowl career was in Super Bowl 13, when he was named defensive player of the game after amassing six tackles, two sacks, and a fumble recovery in the Steelers' 35-31 victory over those nasty Dallas Cowboys. After his Steelers career was finished, he continued playing in the U.S. Football League for three seasons, two as a player with the Michigan Panthers and one as a player coach for the Memphis Showboats. He began his coaching career in 1995 in football as the football defensive coordinator and head baseball coach at Washington and Jefferson. In 1995, he, w he was named the American Football Quarterly Defensive Coordinator of the Year. And in 1997, he won the PAC Baseball Championship and was named PAC Coach of the Year in that sport. He took over as head coach at Washington and Jefferson in 1999, where his record over the next four years is 38-9, which is a .809 winning percentage. All four of those years, Washington and Jefferson won the PAC championship, made the NCAA Division III playoffs, and in all four of those years, Coach Banizak was named the PAC Coach of the Year. Coach Banizak began his coaching career here at Robert Morris in 2003, and four years ago was named to the position of assistant head football coach, a prelude to why we're here today. His primary coaching responsibilities have included the defensive line and special teams. He was part of a defensive staff that coached the top-ranked defense in the Northeast Conference in 2004, 2006, 2009, and 2010. Under Coach Banizak's tutelage, eight different defensive, eight different defensive linemen, eight, just talking about the defensive line, uh, have been named all Northeast Conference, and several of them have earned that honor on multiple occasions. In the special teams arena, Coach Banizak has had three different players named all NEC as kick return specialists. Off the field is extremely important to us, as well as on the field, as President Galamo mentioned. Coach Banizak has played a lead role in the academic monitoring of the football program. He has been very much involved in our excellent record of academics in football, as President Galamo mentioned. 
We have an ever-rising team GPA in our football program over the last number of years. We have excellent APR scores, which is an NCAA measure of graduation rates. We have had excellent graduation success rates, another NCAA uh, measure of graduation, and a number of academic All-Americans repeatedly over the years to show for his efforts uh, in monitoring the academic matters of our student athletes. Coach Banizak is also very much active in the community. He serves on the Board of Trustees at Holy Family Institute, and in fact he leads a, a contingent of student athletes from all sports, from our Student Athlete Advisory Council. Every year, the Holy Family Institute's uh, uh, building on Route 65, residential uh, facility where kids live, to decorate their house for Christmas. A tremendous community effort. He's also vice president of the Pittsburgh chapter of the NFL Alumni Association. He is a very well-respected public speaker. Those who have heard him speak publicly know that uh, his talks are spellbinding. In fact, he met with a group of our trustees in preparation for this day and had them spellbound for about 25 minutes. Um, he is an outstanding representative of our university in community affairs and in university fundraising efforts. And we're glad to have him as our coach in waiting after the 2013 season. And we welcome he, his wife Mary, children and grandchildren to the RMU football family now as the uh, future head coach of our university. Before we turn it over to John, we're going to uh, ask Coach Walton to say a few words from his 85 degree villa in Puerto Rico. Still can't hear you. Yeah, no, I can't. You, so is my new gong. Okay. Do you want me to talk now? Because I haven't heard anything that's been going on. <laughs> you tell me how he's on now. I'm on now to talk. First of all, I want to congratulate uh, John uh, and Mary. Uh, this is a wonderful day for them, and it should be his day. Uh, I miss seeing you both. Uh, I look forward to uh, when I get back. But I want to welcome you to paradise. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Lord. I am, uh, uh, have been so blessed uh, to have been at Robert Moore's uh, for these 18 or 19 years. And, uh, Looking forward to uh, <coughs> finishing up uh, uh, in the next two. Uh, it's been a labor of love. Uh, I love the university and I love everybody that uh, I've been associated with there. It's been a uh, it's been a great ride. Uh, I, I certainly uh, uh, think that all the help that I receive. Uh, the success we've had and uh, to help me build the program. Uh, it's just been a, uh, uh, a wonderful thing. Uh, I want to, uh, uh, as I said, uh, uh, congratulate John. Uh, it became evident to me after I announced that I would retire after two years uh, that uh, it might be a problem with recruiting uh, and this seemed like the best solution uh, for us to uh, uh, make sure that all the recruits know that uh, everything's going to be stable and that they're going to be in good hands. Uh, so uh, uh, w it was kind of a combined thing uh, between Dr. Coleman and, uh, and Dr. DeLamo uh, that would be uh, advantageous to all of us to know that uh, uh, John is going to step in uh, and carry on uh, uh, kind of a tradition that we've built there at Robert Morris that uh, uh, we can play uh, quality football uh, against quality teams. Uh, certainly, I know we're going to go to greater success than I ever thought of. Uh, 
that's about all I have to say. Uh, I'd certainly uh, be willing to answer any of your questions uh, uh, concerning uh, this uh, very, very nice event. Okay, we'll just come to the reception area then. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Coach Walton. And now, you all didn't come to hear me talk. I'm sorry, Dr. Delamo. They probably didn't come to hear you talk either. So, <laughs> okay. I'd like to introduce, I'd like to, introduce muted, to you. I you know, can't follow what's going on. Just tell them to hold on. <laughs> I'd like to introduce to you our head coach in waiting, Coach John Vanderbilt. Thank you, Craig, uh, Dr. Delamo, uh, and guests. Um, it's been a tough day so far. Last night I wrote a speech. Um, I had trouble with printing it. My printer ran out of ink, so I emailed it to my uh, desk here at uh, in the football offices. And um, I get to the office this morning. And there's an accident and no electricity, and I can't get on the Internet to retrieve my speech. But I do have page one and two, but I lost <laughs> I lost pages seven, eight, nine, and ten, okay? <laughs> so you're going to have to put up with this. What a great honor and pleasure it is for me and my family to be introduced as the second head football coach here at Robert Morris University. There are a lot of people responsible for this, and I certainly want to thank them. Dr. Delomo, your guidance and leadership at this university since you've been here is absolutely extraordinary. Uh, thank you for having the confidence in me uh, to lead this football program after Coach Walton retires. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the administration for their time that they gave me last week. I know that they're very busy and um, I really appreciate the, the interview process that we had with them. I hope I live up to their expectations. I'd like to thank the trustees for their vote of confidence in me. Uh, what, amazing, what an amazing job they've done in transforming Robert Morris University into a remarkable place to learn and to play. I want to thank Dr. Coleman and let him know that I appreciate all the help that he's given me and to let him know that um, he and I are going to be some very close associates um, two years from now. I want to thank our football staff and coaches. Thanks for all you guys have done for me personally. Thanks for what you've done for the football for the football program. You guys know how I feel about you. Uh, your work uh, will never go unnoticed or unrecognized. Um, these are the young men um, that put in an awful lot of time and effort into the success of this football program. Uh, they don't get enough credit, but I can assure you, along with Coach Walton, that that will be, be taken care of over the next two years and beyond. To the players that are present, um, thank you guys for all your hard work. Um, we certainly have an awful lot of work to do in the next few years uh, for the juniors and seniors to, um, uh, for the juniors and seniors that'll be with us uh, next year and the second year. We will continue to strive to win, um, to change the what happened a year ago. Uh, to the freshmen, well, good luck to you guys because you're going to have me um, my first year. To my family, uh, my wife Mary, my son Jay, uh, my daughter Amy and her husband Matt, my son-in-law Terry Dunbar, thank you for your support. You guys know I love you very much, and um, you know I know that you guys are my biggest fans. Um, 
we couldn't get our grandkids here uh, because we couldn't tie them down long enough to to put them in this setting. If anybody has um, if anybody's been to an RMU football game in the past few years, you know that um, win or lose on the football field, my grandchildren will be down on their field searching me out. To my friends, uh, John Ferretti, Johnny, and Al, uh, thank you for all your support uh, over the years. Uh, it's meant so much to me, and uh, I really appreciate uh, your long-lasting friendship. Uh, my teammate, John Ferretti, at Montour Heights Country Club. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm going to have enough time in my schedule as a head football coach to contribute to another T-Man championship, but we're going to give it everything we have. I know that. And last but certainly most important, I want to thank Coach Walton. Thank him for bringing me on uh, to his staff nine years ago. I've learned so much from him. I look forward to the next two years. I certainly understand very clearly that uh, Coach Walton is still my boss. Uh, and, but our relationship goes much deeper than that, uh, much deeper than boss and employee. Over the years, I've had the um, wonderful opportunity to become a friend of Coach Walton. And I hold that friendship um, very close. It has become very personal as we have traveled uh, together in the last three years. Our goals over the next two years will not change. Our goal over the next two years as a football program is to, is to win two more championships for Coach Walton, to send Coach Walton out on top as a champion. Um, that would be the greatest tribute that we could give the man who has built this program for the last 18 years. Uh, what an honor it would be for him, for us to accomplish that. Our goals, our goals, again, will not change. As a matter of fact, they'll be intensified as we work hard to accomplish those goals. This will be a smooth transition. There's no question about that. This really isn't about me. And it really isn't about Coach Walton. This is about the young men that we mentor and the young men that we um, that we bring on this campus to serve. These student athletes and the remarkable job that they do on and off the field. I believe that I am much more than a football coach to these young men. Matter of fact, I believe that I have to be more than a football coach. If all I am to them during their years here at Robert Morris University, then I've failed in my responsibility. I believe I have to be a teacher, a counselor, a therapist, a surrogate father figure, and a role model to them. Because we're only on the field for a short period of time during the day. There's a, a job of a football coach and the role of a football coach. And I cherish the role of a football coach more than I enjoy the job of a football coach. Um, I have behind my desk um, a plate of candy bars and, uh, and jugs of M&M's. I learned that from my head football coach, Dan Boyster, at Eastern Michigan University. I want to build a relationship with these young men that will last a lifetime. I want to have this, I want them to have the same experience that I had in my four years of college football. 
And if I can accomplish that, if 20 years from now, no, I won't be coaching 20 years from now. <laughs> but 20 years from now, if these young men can call me up and ask for my advice, I will know that the time spent at Robert Morris University will be time spent that was very, very good, not only to me, but to these student athletes. I'm all in this. I told that to, to Dr. Delamo that um, he can use me in any way, shape, or form that he sees fit. Um, I'm very active. I want to be seen on this campus. I want them to tow wrecked cars onto this campus when we're playing Duquesne University. And I want to be part of that smashing of that car. I want to be, I want to attend basketball games on this campus. I want to get to know the students on this campus. I want to invite those students in person to come and see a football game. I want to invite the faculty on this campus to come and see a football game. Um, that's how we're going to build this, continue to build this university and the tradition uh, that we don't have at this time. This university is only 90 years old. There is not a building on this campus named Old Main. That's how young this university is. Uh, it is a m university that continues to strive to build tradition. And it's going to be exciting to be part of that. Robert Morris University is all about changing lives and building futures. My life has been changed, and we will continue to build the futures for the student athletes that we serve. Some of you may not know, I spent two years in the United States Marine Corps. There's still a little bit of Marine left in me. Ronald Reagan once said, most people go through life wondering whether or not they've made a difference. Marines don't have that problem. I've taken some editorial privilege and have added Marines and good coaches don't have that problem. I want to thank you so much, Dr. Delomo and the administration, the trustees, the athletic department, for giving me the opportunity to continue to make a difference. Thank you very much.